I'll be ready. Okay. So uh, first of all, you'll notice that the color of the lighting has changed here. Has right? it? No, oh, this yeah, one, yeah. White. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay. I just thought maybe make it a tiny bit brighter, see what it looks like for one episode. Normally that it's purple, so it feels off-brand mm. a bit, doesn't it? You know what? Now that I look at it, if you told me without me seeing it, I'd be like, oh, no, don't do that. But it does look nice. It, it does, doesn't it? Because like, it's coming from the table. Yeah. And it, that's it, still, that, the purple's still there, so I think it looks nice. Yeah. I have to the, look at it on camera, though. It's called Energize. The, that this right. this light this this uh, mm. theme is called energized. I do feel energized by it. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, I guess it was working. <laughs> they named it well. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Good branding. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start with the first uh, first things first, mm. which is that uh, by now, by the time this episode's out, inshallah, we should have we should have mentioned or announced that the game is back online and back on sale and back available for you to purchase. The freshly ground game. Freshly ground game. Yes, this game right here. So now, I am expecting a bit of a. Um, I'm expecting, inshallah, excitement for the most part. Ninety-five percent excitement, but I am expecting five percent. You went back on your word, you loser. So I feel like I do have to give some explanation, which we. I am actually going to do an announcement video. So I'm. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this episode because I am in the announcement video. But the long story short is, this was not our plan. We one hundred percent planned to never put the game back on sale and uh, digitally, as in like online. Um, and the reason I differentiate the two is because we were thinking about doing it as an app. Um, okay, so that was 100% our intention. And that's why I so confidently said, it was never a marketing ploy and we knew that we were gonna bring it back on. Obviously the fact that we were never putting on sale again, that was a marketing strategy like to say, look guys, there is urgency because it is never coming back on sale. Yeah. Um, but we, it was never the fact that we were never gonna, we were, that we were planning to bring it back. So what happened is, we announced that it was going off sale. Uh, we're never gonna bring it, sell it again. And then, then uh, there's so many different ways to take the story because then I could talk about like what, how, what the reaction was like instantly and stuff like that. So I'll try and do all of it. It is actually gonna end up being long. So we announced that it wasn't gonna, that we're stopping the sale of the game. Um, and when we announced it, we basically said that we're gonna, we, we've got other plans to do bigger and better things. One of those ideas was obviously to, to do this app um, and to move on and, and stuff like that. Now, initially, what happened in that month is sales of the game soared and it was actually unmanageable, like, alhamdulillah, Allah mubarak, like, it's, it was amazing but we didn't have the infrastructure in place uh, for that many sales in such a short amount of time. So um, that was tough to manage, but that's another topic. And I will talk about that in the announcement video because um, there were a very, sm like a handful of orders that were made that like either s like slipped through the system and they never got sent out and stuff like that. And so before we put, so we had decided that we were considering putting the game back on sale uh, a couple of weeks ago and we, but we made sure that we didn't do that until every single person um, has been like, uh, has every parcel has been, uh, what's the word, like, f um, accounted for? Resolved, yeah. Right, yeah. Whether that's a person's been refunded because they wanted a refund or somebody actually didn't get their order and that's now been sent out and stuff like that. But for the most part, alhamdulillah, like, uh, we were able to fulfill our duty, which was that pretty much everything that was like post, like, ordered was. Uh, oh no, everything that's ordered has now been sent out, but as in like we, we try, we, we, we were, our goal to get it all done in time was fulfilled for the most part. But that, so that's like how like it went in terms of like this, how the sales went. In terms of um, getting us back on track, which is why did we say that it was going on sale and now we're putting it back on sale. So the reaction, of, uh, the reaction was during the, during the month of August, which is when it was, uh, it was ending, um, we did have loads of people saying, why are you not selling it after August? Um, and then after the 30th or 31st of August, when the game stopped being available, then we received a flurry of backlash, like put the game back on sale. Why? Like, we don't understand why you're not selling it um, and stuff like that. We'd get DMs, emails. When does it come back on sale? We didn't know that it was not going on. And, and I think the fact that people didn't even know that it was gonna be discontinued is a beautiful thing in some ways because the game has its own audience. Yeah. Like, p 
people know of freshly grounded because they have the game mm. whereas you would think that it would be the other way around initially obviously it was where people would bought the game because they know of freshly grounded but the game became its own beast yes so anyway there was loads of demand and so when there was loads of demand and it's a great product um and the demand was never stopping it didn't get like okay a few weeks a few months and people said like to this day there's like people constantly messaging saying when is the game come back on sale I'm back. and um so then i started thinking about this and i thought well i'm a bit trapped even if we do want to put it back on sale because we literally said we it's not going on sale and we're going to have like wronged loads of people who in my head, I'm thinking we're gonna have wrong people like because we told them something that we're going back on and yeah. like, is that even Islamic and stuff like that? So um, when I decided I do actually wanna re, I, I made a mistake essentially and I wanna put the game back on sale. Um, I spoke, I had a console, well not, it won't go as far as call it consultation, but I spoke to Sheikh Mohammed Tim Humble who we speak to about a lot of issues. And I said, if I put the game back on sale, essentially is this impermissible? Mm. And I hope I'm being as sincere as possible I'd, uh, when I say this. If he had said that it is not permissible to do that because we had said it and we're going back on our word, we, I would not put the game on sale because no amount of money is worth for me. It would essentially be horror money to me. Uh, and maybe it would, it, it would essentially be horror money because you're uh, doing something that's not allowed. So what he said to me is, as long as you didn't say wallahi, mm. you didn't swear by Allah that you're not putting on sale, and as long as you, I think that was the main thing. Uh, he might have said another condition. You, you also told me, told me that as long oh. as your intention at the time was you weren't going to do yes. it. Yes, as long as your intention at the time was that you genuinely weren't going to put it back on sale. So those were the two things that he said. And genuinely my intention was that we were never, the, the game was never going back on sale online. And the reason I say online specifically is that we had considered like if we had physical copies, like if we were out and about or at a store or at a live event for Freshly Grounded in the future, we could like have it exclusively there, yeah. but like it wasn't gonna go on sale on the, online. Um, so he said, as long as you genuinely had that intention and you didn't promise, say uh, that you didn't swear by Allah, which we didn't, then he said, you can change your mind. People change minds all the time. Businesses change their mind all the time. And um, and so it's fine. And so th so then that was when it was kind of decided that we'll probably put it back on sale. The, however, we still had, this was a few weeks ago, but we still didn't, we hadn't done that yet. And the reason was, is because we were trying to figure out the infrastructure. So the issue, like like I just told you in, in, in August was that we had a heap of sales and we just, we're a small company. We don't even have, at, at our peak, when we like had like, um, uh, maximum people work on Fresh Grounded. I think it was like uh, four. So we're a very small team. And now obviously it's not even four. And um, and so, well, I guess it is now actually. Anyway, the point is, is um, we didn't have any infrastructure. So it's like, well, we put the game back in, we're not gonna have the infrastructure for it. So we wanted to fix that issue, which we believe we have now fixed. So, um, if anybody who made, if anybody has made an order of the game before, and we haven't like, um, like uh, managed that uh, order, um, you can literally directly message Kareem, who's who's managing the order and dealing with it, which is Kareem at freshlyganda.com. But we have, we believe we have, like, we're all like clear, and you know we've got the infrastructure in place now to manage things. We do everything ourselves, so we're not sending it to a fulfillment company and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's the situation, Gates back sale. Alhamdulillah, man. I think it's good news. I think it might be a little bit of like, oh, you said you wouldn't, but yeah. I think you've explained that. I think I'm happy to accept that there's gonna be that, because I think it's gonna be like a small wave, yeah. and then it'll be- And I think the overall majority will just be happy that it's back. Yeah. You know, it is um, a fantastic game. It really is, man. Uh, I, I remember playing it, I think it was before I met you last year, but not by much, maybe like a few months before like you, you were coming. And I was out with some brothers and they just had it, brothers that you know as well. Okay. And they had it, we just played it like a Karak, Karak place, I mean tea. And it was just, I think that was the first time I played it. And uh, I was like, wow, this is a really good game. Like, I've seen, you've seen videos on, on YouTube, other podcasts, like playing it. Um, but when you play it, it's like, wow, it gets deep. Yeah. It gets deep very, very quickly. So it's a great game. That's why it was so popular. That's why it became its own beast. Um, so yeah, inshallah, onwards and upwards of it. Yeah, I think there's a few things that I like about it. One is that um, you can is subject you can play it in loads of different um, settings. So uh, I've been blessed enough to play it with like friends, with family, 
at a big family gatherings like a big barbecue um, and then also like with the shuyukh which is a whole different experience mm. because you, it's a lot slower it's like you answer the question and then they'll give like a reminder that it remi- like yeah, a, nasi- yeah. a piece of nasiha and stuff like that so there's that and then I think the other element I really like about it is that is how giftable it is mm. so uh, a lot of people have gifted it as wedding presents and stuff which that makes me happy because yeah. like they see that as a valuable a value add to their life and stuff like that so yeah, I wanted to get that out of the way at the beginning of the episode. So, good news. Mm-hmm. And um, that's available now at shop.freshlyblind.com. Lovely. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. It's good news, man. I'm happy. Should we get this party started? Come on in. I'm right. eager. So, um, I, 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 uh, what the, what the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, something that I really liked, which happened uh, today. Mm. Something I saw that I really liked. Um, so... I, I saw it in grogginess because uh, I ended up taking like an, a one hour nap this morning. And nice. I think like I woke up from it, opened my phone and then just saw these things. But um, by the way, I did the weirdest thing today yeah, where I like clear as day remember. So I was about to take a nap and I think I even started napping. And so, okay, uh, backstory, I woke up at 5.45 Fajr and my kids woke up as well. Right. And they would just woke up instantly crying and stuff. And it was just so much. I was like, mm. bruv. And then, so by the time it was 9 a.m., I was like, I had my first meeting was at 10.30. I was like, I'm going to sleep from 9 till 10. And I'm going to go to my meeting 10, yeah. for 10.30. So uh, at 9, in bed, and I think I'd maybe even like started getting in the nap zone. And I remembered in my head, I was like, oh, the guy I have a meeting with at 10.30, let me just message him and say, hey, are we still on for today at 10.30? Because yeah. I hadn't heard from him since. Very strategic. I like that. That's strategic. I do that as well sometimes, just in case. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. then I could obviously extend my nap but then also like you know sometimes you don't hear from someone after you arrange a meeting it's like mm. does he remember that we yeah. have a meeting maybe he's not as organised as a big face he's checked the calendar yeah. he proved that yeah. 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 so anyway I, me- I messaged him and I have a nap I woke up from my nap an hour later I go to check my messages I had never messaged him Ooh. but I remember clear as day messaging him wow so that was a dream yeah How, that's amazing yeah it's I like, remember every second of messaging him. I remember getting my phone, turning around, grabbing yeah. it, sending the message, clicking send, putting it back, going to sleep. Never happened, bro. That's mad, isn't it? It was literally like a thought while you were sleeping. It was it? a like, deep it thought. It wasn't even a dream. Cause you, you, that's not a dream when you think about it because it's literally like a dream is like a subconscious thing you don't really control. You were literally thinking about doing it. You saw it happen in front of you but you didn't actually do it. So it's basically like a thought on the edge of sleep that you had. Yeah, it's like when you your alarm goes off for Fajr. You're really tired and you think to yourself, I need to get up, I need to go to the bathroom, I need to wink with all, so on and so forth. Mm. And you think about it so deep, and then you when you, you and then you fall asleep, you miss Fajr out of sleep, wake up, and you're like, did I pray yeah, or not? Remember because I remember, I really, I remember my alarm getting me up, I remember thinking mm. I need to go get up and wink with all, did I do that? Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, have you ever fell asleep, yeah? This happened to me a few times. By the way, that's not even the thing that I was gonna talk to you about. Right, right. No, <laughs> okay. no, but let's go on this. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, a few times I've been, what I thought was just like looking up at the ceiling or trying to fall asleep, yeah? And I think, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just thinking about stuff, whatever. And whether it's my daughter or my wife will turn to me and say, oh, you, um, st- I don't know, stop snoring, you're snoring. Or something like that. Or my daughter, I think the other day, yeah, my daughter the other day was like, you're snoring funny, something like that. And it was like, I'm awake. Yeah, snoring, that's so snoring. common. But I've heard it more, more times from different people. It's like, oh, I'm snoring. But bro, if you ask me, have, have I slept? No, I'm not sleeping. I'm awake. I'm fully awake. Yeah, yeah. but they're, they're hearing me snore. My father-in-law does it all the time. That's mad, isn't it? Like my, you'll be talking to my father-in-law. He'll be sitting down on the sofa. You'll be talking to him. And then you see, you hear him snore. And then you're like, uncle. And he'll be like, yeah. Like he, he's like, I've heard everything. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, He's like, yeah. I'm not sleeping. That's mad, isn't it? Like, we literally had just, yeah. yeah. That's mad. It is crazy. Yeah, but that happens to me as well. Like sometimes my wife will be like, oh, you're snoring. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I can't snore when I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think you're hearing things. Yeah. So anyway, um, in that in that whole thing, of be, uh, my point was, that's like how tired I was and stuff. So mm. I woke up and I instantly checked my phone because I wanted to see if the guys messaged me. I somehow end up on Instagram scrolling, right? Now, I saw this video and I was like, wow, this is actually really uh, profound stuff. Mm. I don't know who it was, I don't know where it was. I don't know any of this because I was 50% yeah. asleep. It might, I might have never seen this video. Yeah, I might you be woke up at a point, oh, yeah. I'm awake now. I'm, <laughs> it's like I'm, Inception. Yeah, I might actually, this video might not exist. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. might have only happened in my dream. But the, the guy was on, it was a clip um, and a guy was on a podcast and this guy, he said, he said, I have, th- some of what he said is a bit, 
like you can take it a bit like, all right, like a bit ridiculous, but actually I think it's really cool. Yeah. So he said, I have three days in my day. Okay, have you seen this clip? Yeah, it's weird. Go on. Yeah, I know it's a bit weird. Like, it's the kind of thing that you could imagine there being a skit on SNL about it. Like a guy <laughs> being like, so I, when you're having one day, exactly. I have three days. Exactly. But I do think that the, there's a part of the concept which is really good. So right. he said, um, I have three days in my day. He goes, day one for me is 6 a.m. till 12 p.m. Day two is 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And day three is 6 p.m. till midnight or whatever. And he said the point what he, that he's making is, he said that it's ridiculous that we think it takes us a hot 24 hours to have a day basically yeah. um like in the in do you say the stone age or something like that where like i can't remember exactly the whole yeah thing, but he said yeah. like the stone age where you know they actually genuinely you're, you're traveling you're doing this you're doing that so um his point was he and then th- then it started getting a bit like because he then he said like so when you're on day one i'm on day three exactly, yeah. he's like when you've had seven days in your week i've had 21 yeah, days in my week yeah. but so th- it did get a bit far but there's an element i like in it which is this i think we've spoken about this as well about like, we don't, you don't, we need to get out of the mindset that um, a full day's work is like eight hours of work, Yeah. right? Um, and when he said, you know, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. is uh, my first day, what it made me think of it is, is you could, if you have like a solid work session from 6 a.m. till 12 p.m., six hours of hardcore work, um, there's no reason why you need to carry on. Like you can essentially l- live your second day as in like from 12 moving on to whatever. Um, but th- the point being is that we do live in a digital world. We do have tools available to us. Mm. We do, for a lot of us do our work on a computer. We don't necessarily, we shouldn't necessarily have to, it goes back to that law that Kareem and you've spoken about before, yeah. which is like you work in the amount of time you were given. That's right. Um, it is, it's weird that the algorithm showed me this video mm. because what I've been thinking recently, but I swear it's just a thought. Like I haven't even said this out loud, but I've been thinking recently I might switch my work day because what I've realized, maybe it's a, it's a winter thing, yeah. is that there's Dohar and Asr and Maghrib and Isha and they're like one after the other, like every two hours or something. So, mm. you know, you're here, you do Dohar at like 12.45 in the mosque and you let's say you're back home for like, I don't know, one o'clock, ten past one, and then three thirty is asr. So you do two and a bit hours worth of work. Yeah. But by the time you get in the zone and back out the zone, so you do two hours, let's say. Then you're back from asr at four, and it's maghrib at five thirty. Yeah. Then you're back from maghrib at six, and then it's isha at seven twenty. So in between that, you're getting one and a half hours worth of work every time. However, between six a.m. So fajr right now is. Uh, 6 a.m. in the mosque. So let's say you're home at seven. Between seven a.m. till 12.30, you're getting five and a half hours. So I was thinking I might switch my days and 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 also that's the time it normally bothers you. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is I might switch my days, do no meetings in the morning, like I'm unavailable to everyone, but I'm doing five and a half hours of like, uh, what do they call it? Not deep work, but flow, uh, flow state work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I do five and, a half of, five and a half hours of flow state work every day, that's amazing. I'll get so much productivity done, but then also the rest of my day I have available for meeting. I, I always have meetings in the evening because my, because Tartil are working on Eastern time. So it's nine hours behind. So any meeting I have for Tartil is like post 7 p.m. Yeah. But yeah, I can like fit things around. At least, at least you'll be pre- prepared for it. Innit? You can just like, you could turn up at 7 p.m. And ready. I would have done my work. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're done. Yeah. 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 So it's called uh, Parkinson's rule. Ooh. Yeah, or rule, yeah. Which basically is, you're w- if I give you eight hours to do a task, you will spread that task out across the eight hours, right? Which is pretty much what happens in a nine to five job, right? Okay, you get here at nine, you finish at five, here's your four tasks to do today. People will just stretch it out and it will feel like you've done all that time, all that work, but you're not being very efficient. It's like, you know, you just dragged out, right? Because you've got that time, 5 p.m. So, you, you know, you, you really turn on the engine like 4 p.m. to get it done. But if you had those so, same four tasks and, you, and I said to you, look, it's 9 a.m. now, you've only got to 11, you get it done. You probably just get it done. Unless, like, yeah, you get it done. And then, so the, 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 the problem that we have is we'll give ourselves these times or we've sort of been programmed to say, oh, to say that I've had a good day, I need to have worked eight hours or six hours or at least like five, six hours. Whereas in reality, there's been many times where I've sat down for like 40 minutes 
and I feel like I've like done a day's work, day of work in that 40 minutes, just because it doesn't happen very often, but if you get into that flow state where it's like, man, my, my to-do list is quite long, I've got to send this invoice, do that, da, da, da. I sometimes just sit down and bang it out, I don't look at my phone, nothing, yeah? And it's like, wow, I got through a to-do list that was meant to be for the whole day, but I've actually got it done in like 40, 45 minutes, right? And I've got, I could, now I've got time to do other stuff. So I feel like unlocking those sort of like small periods of time where you can just get a lot done is the key, man, rather than saying, oh, I'm gonna work from seven to 12, even seven to 12, 30 is a long time. Like you, even that you probably stretch yourself and it's like, you probably could have got it done in like four hours, well, yeah, three hours rather than like four and a half type of thing. So yeah, um, but having said that, I do like what you're saying and I would like to do that. I'd like to follow you in that as in waking, as in like starting from seven, finishing at 12, 30. My only blocker there is like, I, I'm not good at going to bed early. So like after like three or four days of doing that, I'm gonna just like burn out. Yeah, I, I, I don't plan to start my day at seven, to be honest, because I, my, day, my day never starts before nine. Because be before nine, I'm like with the kids and mm -hmm. I like to have my morning yeah. routine, how I have it. So I wouldn't like to start my day before nine. I would just feel like it's uh, between kind of the hours of six and nine, I do like to start my day slowly. Yeah. But even nine till the whole like of, of flow state work, like, bear in mind, that's not that's not to say that I'm not gonna do any work after the yeah, hood, yeah, yeah. but bro, things come up. Exactly. Like work things come up that are like unavoidable, so you can manage those where you've still had flow. Imagine you're working and then someone asks you a question and then you go you go off track. So that time is for those things. Yeah. Or meetings. Like I've always done this thing where uh, since I've been in Dubai, I've taken my meetings in the morning. Even like I said, I had a meeting today at ten thirty, that ended up not happening, but I've got a meeting tomorrow at, in the morning and stuff. And I realize now that my morning is actually my most valuable time where I don't want meetings. I'd rather have, I, I don't want to get them out of the way in the morning. Yeah. I want to actually leave them until the end. Yeah, I agree. That's, I have meetings late because of the same reason you have meetings late. Most clients are in America or Europe. But yeah, if, if I had the chance, if I had the option, I'd still keep them late. Especially in your position where like you've already got meetings that are late, you might as well bunch them together. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what, one point I was doing with my, with my clients was like, Oh, let me spread. I'll have one client meeting on Monday, another one on Tuesday, Wednesday, and spread it out across the week. Week, and I thought I was being smart because like, oh, I can spread it out, right? It makes more sense. But reality, it's much better to like have like three on Wednesday and two on Thursday, right? Group it together, and I've also made it where it's like well, I tried to make it where it's like um, once every two weeks, rather than like every week there's meetings, right? So every second week we should have like almost no meetings with clients. So like this whole you know bunching together thing, I feel like it's like it's sort of it's sort of not what you think is the best thing to do because originally I went for the whole spreading it out thing. But if you again if you just bunch it together and you force yourself like okay every meeting is coming up in the next two days we need to be ready for those meetings and get it done, it just creates that urgency where it's like okay cool we're gonna get it done. Similar to what we said earlier it was like you can either stretch it out across eight hours or get it done in three. Similar kind of thing I think. So yeah. I think the world is gonna become. A it is going to become like you can see already like the whole world is becoming remote and like people working their own hours and things are flexible, and especially in the startup world, everything's super flexible. But I do think like that's just going to be the norm. I, I think in the, maybe like a decade or so, I think in a couple decades, like in the next couple generations, people will say, you know, like my great granddad or something or my granddad, they used to work like they used to have set hours, yeah. they used to work nine to five. Like, that's so weird. It's already, got, yeah, go on. I, I, I think there's positives and negatives. I think the negatives are that people are never going to switch off work. You're always going to be available to work because mm. you've got your phone with you. But that, I think the world is going in that direction anyway. Everything's work. But I think the positives are, yeah, like everybody, re regardless of whether they are an employer or an employee, everybody will be able to take their child to the dentist appointment. Yeah. Everybody, will, and, 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 and it will be a norm everyone will understand. Hey, you can't make tomorrow's meeting. Yeah take my daughter to the dentist yes cool we'll catch up on it after yeah, like yeah. it will be whereas right now i'm sure in many in the corporate world it's like not normal to mm. do that yeah i think like i think i, I agree we're going to go that way and it's kind of already happening because of covid because we sort of took that step a lot of the old school employers still want people in the office for whatever reason tradition i guess or whatever, whatever reason they have but i do agree i think that's the way forward man i think that's the best way to, to manage a team as well like with with my I've got a very small team, but again, like I don't I I hate to micromanage because I hate being micromanaged, right? I don't I don't need my colleague to be anywhere or do anything at a certain time unless it's like a client meeting. As long as he's ready for a client meeting and he, and he takes it, 
I don't care if you're on a beach, I don't care if you're traveling, I don't care what time you did it. As long as it was done on a deadline or the milestone, it's great. Do you know what I mean? Like we, we should move towards like this, like, you know, deadline, milestone, results, results based, results driven workplace rather than like you must spend eight hours in the office. We just spoke about how inefficient that, that usually is, where it's like you're, you're, you're spending eight hours in the office for the sake of it because you're being paid per hour, which is, which is another thing. Being paid for hours is kind of silly as well because, again, it's not, it's not the most efficient way to make money or pay anybody money. It's an outdated way of paying people money, basically. Results-based driven stuff, there's deadlines driven stuff. That's the way it's got to be, man. You know what I mean? If, I, if I'm paying somebody to deliver a, cli a project to a client by the end of January, if he does it and we get paid and the client's happy, why should I care if he was in Hawaii on a beach doing it or in my office? Yeah, exactly. Why should I, what's, what difference does it make to me? Do you know what I mean? So if anything, it makes a difference in the sense that I can hire 10 of these guys who are traveling around. Yeah. I ain't got to pay for their travel into the office. I ain't got to pay for an office. I ain't got to, you know what I mean? All this kind of stuff. They can do what they want. We meet every week or every day, whatever it's got to be on Zoom. And the stuff gets done. And they're happy to do it. And I'm happy to just manage it. Yeah, and know? then your employees are happy as well. Yeah. And so they do good work. Because That's what people want. And I think the other thing about it is that they have, uh, you have an understanding as a team that there are times where, because the natural state of the company is, relaxed like that yeah there are times where we all gonna there's gonna be grind mode mm. and it's like all right guys heads down we we've got a project to do it's due soon i need everyone to just be on it yeah everyone gets that and is on it and they'll be like um you, i've noticed like people will be like cut their holiday short mm. i'm traveling back because we have to get this thing done and so they're doing that on their own accord no one's asked them to do that yeah, yeah. so it's like it's good because if you get the people who fit, who fit the culture they themselves will themselves will make those decisions and it's the right decision yeah it, it, it builds it builds loyalty when you do this kind of stuff where it's like i'm not trying to micromanage you i just want you to do the work that builds like a level i feel anyway a level of loyalty that you could never get in like a just a nine to five office job mm. oh, i've employed just come sit in my office for eight hours love love me love my culture love my business yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they don't they're here because you're paying them they're here for, for the hours you're paying them as soon as the hours are up there they're out the door Unless you can build a culture, an unhealthy culture, it's like you know these like uh, big four uh, consultancies where it's like they work till 10 p.m. type of stuff. That's just like it's based on like fear and like intimidation from people basically. And the fact that they like huge, yeah, they yeah. But the the but the point is, people are scared to leave early because it's like yeah. oh, I'll be shunned and looked down upon, and because that's the that's the culture they've they've built. It's an unhealthy like culture they've built. It's not a nice one. No no one likes that. Oh, we stayed till 10 o'clock today. It was so good. Like no one likes that. It's an unhealthy fear based type thing. Whereas if like you're saying if there's a nice culture of like, we value you as, a, as someone who gets work done. If you've got to take your kid to the dentist, great, see you soon. If you want to take a nap, fine. As long as you're hitting your deadlines, we're happy. But when it's grind mode, you're happy to step it up because these guys aren't on your neck 24-7. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to like um, be a good part of the team, step up, grind, you know, show up for your team when they're a very nice, easygoing, laid back team 99% mm. of the time. Mm. So it should be, man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's our business management course 101. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should have charged for that. Yeah. We, should, well, we will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah inshallah. So, um, what you got? Did you have something? I did, yeah. Okay, go on then. So, I've, dis I've rediscovered, yeah, my love for just like going like supermarket shopping, like grocery shopping. Oh, really? Just like, just for the vibes. Yeah, in the UK, I used to get vibes from that. Yeah, now I've been- I still apping, do. I've been app shopping and stuff. See if you, I mean, so in the UK, I would purposely just go to like Tesco at like 10 p.m. Yeah. 9, 10 p.m. I don't need anything, just to walk around. Bro, we all get it. Yeah. We've all had that. Yeah. yeah. But That's, no need, no need to explain no need, that one. Yeah. yeah, no need. The vibes is just immaculate, man. Yeah. Like, Tesco vibes, 10 p.m., yeah. bro. As long as it wasn't like some sort of stabbing outside when you got there, it's like, oh, okay, cool. It's yeah. a nice night. Yeah. Fine, we, we, we've avoided that one. Fine. But yeah. you've rediscovered your love for it in Dubai, have you? We, yeah, man. Not, I mean, I've always enjoyed it to an extent. But recently, the way my recent uh, schedule has been set up, I've got some, I'm doing my work at the mall at the moment in the early morning. So I've been using that time just to like to do, get the shopping done. And it kind of gives me the same vibe where it's like not a huge amount of people in the shop because it's just the time of day. 
like everything's so lo- lovely, nicely set up. It's just like, oh, let me just like walk around and like chill and say, oh, what's in what's in the Thai section th- today? You know oh, what I mean? Like, wow, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like this kind of stuff. Oh, oh the Brazilian aisles oh, looking interesting today. You just scroll, scroll, scroll down there. Yeah, man, it's just it's just nice. It's nice. I've just rediscovered that sort of feeling a little bit. It's, it's interesting because recently, since I've come back from London, I don't have a car, and so I've been doing everything on online the app. Yeah, the biggest difference I found is that there's less. Uh, what is it called? Variety, and you don't get the deals. Yeah, yeah. Now going in, going in store actually pays off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're paying way more by doing on the app. Yeah. Things, certain things are like almost like very cheap at the moment, like cucumbers and peppers. And really? Seen, like, like giving it away, bro. Like organic cucumbers. Like, what do you think? It's time free, of year thing. Free dinner. I don't know. Well, no. Part of it is the fact that it's been raining a lot. No. Yeah. No. It's. Oh. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the reason is because they're growing it locally, basically. So, like, yeah, so it's because it's been raining a lot recently, they've been growing That does help. It does help. Yeah, it helps. It helps. Uh, <laughs> it's stupid to do. <laughs> it rained like two days ago. So, yeah, like, the true. cucumbers grew in like two days. Done, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, they're growing it. Also, more. they're sprinklers. Like, it's not yeah. like they were you know just raining. Like, we're not, we're not living in the 18th century anymore. The only source of like, yeah, yeah fine. The, I think the main way they, not the main way, but definitely like a growing way they're growing things here is like through. Um, Hydroponics, you heard of hydroponics? No, where it's like this vertical farming thing, no. where instead of it being like they're definitely normal farms here as well, but they've got like these big indoor farms where it's like, um, how can I explain it? Because I'm desperate to know, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I want to know yeah. about farming, yeah. I know you're eager to hear this, yeah. Imagine like a wall, imagine like a wall of like plants and like they're being fed directly, um, water. Um, and there's therefore there's, there's because it's indoors, there's no need to fertilize or anything like that. It's just very ah, efficient. Okay. And you can grow like you know m- millions of these things indoors, type in like a big building. Uh, so I think that's like a big driver for for like farming here at the moment, like growing things. So cucumbers, peppers, at a minute, there's loads of them, and it's like cheap because it's being wow. grown here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, so I'm enjoying going to I'm enjoying going to cu- uh, it's Carrefour, picking up a, ba- a little thingamajig of cucumbers for like three dirhams. That's just nice. Like feeling feeling good about myself. And are you are you going by yourself? Most of the time. Sometimes I take my daughter. Oh, that must be a bit more stressful. Though. That's not as enjoyable, surely. A little tantrum here and there. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't enjoy it either. Yeah, but they don't. <laughs> no, she does. To be fair, if I say to her, I'm going to get a um, get her like a, a sweet, then she'll be happy. I I took my boys to the local car for uh, the other yesterday, mm. and um. I like exactly like touching things in the aisles, like the yeah. products. I'm like, stop touching things. I was just that dad that was like, yeah. Zaria, stop it, Zaria, like stop running around. I, it, it was the wrong time of day to take them. Like yeah. everything was just not set up to be a, for it to be a good idea. And um, it, it, what I thought about, but then like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes like, also like you, I I like end up extra parenting where I don't need to. So what I mean by that is like Zachary was like kind of walking, and then there was this woman who like had a pram, and like they kind of like kind of hit each other, and she was like, oh sorry, and I was like, oh sorry, and then I was like, like Zachary, like watch where you're going. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. normally I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Like, but it's like you sometimes I end up like show parenting mm. because I'm in public. Right. I'm like, why am I doing that? Like, I'm yeah. like, like I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't normally be as harsh, but it's like, because it's almost like, you know, like when you're at a play center and like a kid like pushes your kid yeah. and you want to just say to that kid, don't push my kid. Yeah. But it's a kid. Yeah. So instead you're like, uh, Zachariah, like, you know, don't annoy him. Yeah. Like, Zachariah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knock it one more, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like a lot of people must suffer from like, Show parenting, should we call it? Yeah, I think it's normal because in that situation, you want to make it clear to other person that you are, a nice person and like you, yeah you know what i mean oh you, you don't raise your kid to do that or like yeah you don't want to think that you don't care that they did that yeah because i see that a lot where it's like the opposite will happen the kid's doing something crazy like and the parent doesn't care the parent doesn't care and that doesn't annoy me nice, yeah. it doesn't i'm not gonna lie it does annoy me yeah um so i don't want to be that person i want to be like okay if my child is having a huge tantrum in the middle of a restaurant i want to be seen to at least be as annoyed as everybody else. Right? This reminds me of this reminds me of um, you go to a cafe shop. That's basically yeah, yeah. I just want. You, I think I think it's important to to a point to show that I'm attempting to control this child. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I'm. I'm You're, fine. You are attempting. Aren't I'm going to carry on doing that. <laughs> I, I, what it reminded me of is because you said that that annoys you. I remember 
I remember one thing started annoying me when I became parent, and it made me feel like such a um, like I'm not normally <laughs> like this, but bro, it just like really rattles me is when people park in the parent and child bay and they have no child. <laughs> I'm broke. Hold on, before you continue, yeah, I do. Uh, sometimes I do that with just me and Aya, and if it's no, like, that's fine. Is you that fine? Yeah, because sometimes, because sometimes the picture is like of a woman with a child, but I just think, no, bro, you, that's is that fine. Right? You got a child. Bro. That's been that's way that's been way <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, bro, don't <laughs> worry, <laughs> I approve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right, no, bro. I, I haven't seen it in the uh, in Dubai, but it was in. The, I saw it in the UK a lot. Mm. So there's two occasions where it really annoyed <laughs> me. So one time, bro, yeah, I was parking in Lidl, uh, but. For, those, those bays aren't common, one. Yeah, no. And so it's annoying when there's not one available. And when you got one or even two children with you, mm. there's multiple reasons why it's beneficial. One, safety of the child. Yeah. They, they, there's no crossing of the road, you have to do anything like that. So when your kids, the kids, they like, obviously it reduces the chance of them getting run over, essentially, right? <laughs> like we're calling, yeah. If we're calling a spade a spade <laughs> yeah. here, right? Yeah. And not a big spoon. Yes. Essentially, like, th that's why they place them in places yeah. where kids are likely to not have to cross any roads and stuff. Mm. Then the space allows you to get a pram out and stuff like yes. that. And then th also the space allows you to, like, um, discipline the child of the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Multiple benefits, yeah. right? So there are these conveniences for when you yes. actually genuinely have a child. Now, one time I was trying to look for a parking space in Lidl, finally found one. And as I'm parking, a woman walks back to her car, an older woman, right? Mm. So I'm like, she definitely doesn't have a child. <coughs> like, no judgment. <laughs> yeah. But this woman yeah. is probably ain't got, like, scientifically, <laughs> I don't think she's got a child, right? Yeah. Like a baby, right? So I'm like, fine. Yeah. My mom uh, and my nan and stuff could take my kids out. Mm. So it's fine. It's probably just grandma, yeah. right? It's yeah. fine. So... That was like, okay, no problem. But she didn't have a kid with her. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, fine, maybe there's a kid in the car, whatever, whatever. And like, I just wanted to just carry on living my life and not let it bother me, mm. but I just couldn't, yeah. right? And so, because she parked next to me, I was fighting the desire, fighting the desire. And then I just, this thing in my head was going, but does she have a car seat? Does she have a car seat? <laughs> yeah. And I, I just finally looked, I looked in her window and there was neither a child nor a car seat nor any sign of her possibly having a child. And when I say she was elderly, she wasn't elderly like disabled, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like walking stick. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just yeah. so bro. Uh, that just uh, I was like, because I was looking for a space. I have my two kids and Did like you say anything safety. To her? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I, don't that. I don't. I don't. I don't. That was one time. Another time it happened is when uh, I was looking for. This is in Asda now, not right. little. Fine. And going up in the world. So the levels, yeah, the levels are a bit <laughs> up now. This woman goes out to her car and exact same scenario. And the thing that annoyed me this time was that she was a Muslim. All right. And I thought, I'm not going to say anything to you because I'm being biased here and um, that's my Muslim sister. Yep. I am being biased. Enough said. She's my Muslim sister. Yeah. Do your thing. However, it makes Muslims look bad. Because, and that upsets me, because I'm like, you know, when you got lahia, you got hijab, stuff like that, people are gonna, like, bro, if, okay, if a, if, if a non-Muslim looks at that, what's the first thing they're gonna say? Yeah. They're gonna say that Muslim woman. Yeah, yeah. But it just, uh, unfortunately, we have it like that, mm. where people categorize us instantly based on, like, how we, that Muslim woman, she, like, didn't even have a kid, blah, blah, blah. So we almost have more responsibility mm. to, like, make sure we, look, a Muslim is bound by his, the rules, the rules, right? And so, like, we kind of like want to. And bro, I, I can't sit on my high horse. I do very, I do loads of things that are like I yeah, should do better. Yeah. I don't have the best character. Me too. But I just think that we are more. Mag we have a magnifying glass on us, especially in the UK as Muslims. Yeah. So like, we want to almost like do ourselves a favor, right? Definitely, man. For for the old woman, I would, I would have said, oh, I hope I would have said something like, oh, you left your kid in in the shop. I feel like you would have said that. <laughs> you no, no, you got to go. Because yeah. I'm like, you wouldn't have parked here. You, yeah, exactly. you must be in the frozen food chip. Like, and you're like, oh, no, no, no. So that would have been interesting. I, I think you would have said that. I'll, 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 I'm, I'm less conversational than I, than I think you think I am. I, I, I hope so anyway, but... Yeah. I, think, I don't know, but it's a good bro. Like, you to call people out. Because sometimes there's an advantage. If you call people out on something, they might... Um, not do it again. There's a time and place. I think there's a time and place. I probably wouldn't let the old lady slide, to be honest. No, she wasn't an old lady. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Like, I would let the frail old lady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like a. Uh, she had like yeah. four hawking sticks. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, considering, like. I'm like, God oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it reminds me, though. It reminds me. 
Yeah, yeah, but I feel like a moany person saying that because I feel like I, no. I, normally when people get annoyed about things like that, I'm the first person to be like, bro, like, get over it. No, like, when, but when like that, it's just one of the things I'm just like, no, oh. I hear it, I hear it. It's like, for example, and again, I can't say I haven't done it. When you go and use a disabled toilet and you think, you know, let me just quickly go use a disabled toilet, yeah? And then you come out and like, there's someone standing there. Have you ever had that? I haven't had that. Uh, no, no. But you can imagine there is yeah, like... Yeah, definitely imagine there is like... There's like eye contact. It's like, so awkward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is all good, yeah. But it's reminding me of that uh, situation. So I have a family member, a close family member of mine, right. who is so pro these hacks. Okay. Like this well, like person... Using the same, using the same yeah, toilet. this person, Fine. he'll park in the child uh, baby, okay. even if he's got a baby. <laughs> he's gone as far as buying the disabled <laughs> key from Amazon. So you know in the UK, most disabled tweets now have this special key that you get given for Like he's bought the key and stuff that, like that. Is that for like, it opens any toilet or something like it that? It opens any disabled toilet. Oh, I need because that. Because people, yeah. And so, <laughs> and like, so, I when I like I have to, I have to hold bite my tongue when I when I hear these yeah. stories like he will like find new hacks and tell me about them I'm like yep <laughs> <laughs> bro I'm not gonna lie the Amazon that key I might, no might I'm, I'm so like, anti that man. I get the fight I get that but some, bro some, sometimes you gotta go man so gotta if you go. have an issue. Yeah. Fine, if yeah. you have like a weak bladder situation, but I can't. I would just feel so embarrassed, like if someone yeah. called me out on that. I would, I would as well, and yet yeah, it doesn't necessarily stop me. Yeah, it stops <laughs> me. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> like, but I'm. I'm you know like, what? Because it's quite rare that it's going to be you. That's why. I, I'm not I, the disabled. I'm not saying this about disabled parking bays because they get used a lot and for good reason. But the toilet is a bit like. Mate, you know what? I haven't actually seen anybody who would probably use this. Let me just quickly pop in pop it out. Yeah, I, I think I'm too frail like that. Like, if I was standing in a queue to pay for something in the shops and someone goes, oh, sorry, mate, like I was ahead of you and I have no way of um, verifying verifying that, I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, I would as well, though. That's fine. fine. If, I, if, I, if I join don't know and I try in my head to like say, oh, I didn't see him. He may have been. If yeah. there's a good, But if I know for a fact that he wasn't there, then I'd be like, no, I was here. Or if people are like, um, you know, if people like, like for example, someone's like, oh, we don't accept, like, okay. We don't expect the American Express. If people are like, we don't expect, accept card, yeah. All right, yeah. And then like, we need cash. Like, I think a very justifiable thing to say, especially in the UK, is why don't you take card? Mm. I don't know the rules here. But are, you, are you evading tax? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you know, like, you, because it, the reason I say that is, in when we were in sixth form, there was a corner shop that wouldn't accept card mm. unless you're spending five pound. And then yeah, I remember yeah. watching a video on like, uh, TikTok wasn't around then, maybe it was on like- um, Vine. Vine or something, yeah. <laughs> but it was like, did you know that that's illegal? And I was like, hmm, I didn't know this. Let me keep watching. Yeah. And it was like, in the UK, someone is not allowed to charge you more because they're getting a, um, they're getting charged more for a lower, right, so right, right. whatever, or whatever, all right? So I was like, oh, so then they were like, next time somebody says that, ask them, <laughs> did you know this is illegal? <laughs> so um, I was like, I'm definitely doing that. Like, if someone says to me, mm. you know, you have to make, you're essentially saying to somebody, no, you have to pay more money. Yeah, basically. Otherwise, you're, so I have to buy more things. So, but yeah, I didn't do that. I, I just pay, I always like grab an extra thing. Oh, but, there's, there's, there's a two pound chewing gum right here. Yeah, but I should that? say, yeah. no, no, you don't have to say that's illegal, but I should say like, why? Why can't I pay on card? Mm. Or, or like, because if, essentially they would let you just pay on card if you're going to cause a fuss. Probably. Have you seen these videos of um, people getting pulled over by the police and they've got like a file of like the laws about why they can't no. pull over? You never heard, you've never no. seen these? It's all over YouTube. Is it like in the UK and US and stuff like that? Both, a bit yeah. both. Um, where it's like, okay, they're basically these people like planning to get pulled over. I don't know what they're doing, yeah? But yeah. basically, or they're, they've they just want to... Something like that. They've got a camera set up so like they can, you can see them and the window and stuff. Yeah. And like they know, they've know they memorized all the laws about getting pulled over, da, 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 right? And like they basically take the policeman to like, you know, to the edge of like... If it's, like under what section? Under yeah. What, yeah. And it's just like... Bro, why why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, and in America as well, they're armed and like they're looking for an excuse maybe to beat you yeah. up or something like that. It's like, bro, what is the point? Yeah, I like yeah. if I in the UK. Um, Obviously, that's not the same as a, as a corner shop guy <laughs> charging you a fiver. But I, like, remember, yeah. I remember once in the UK, I got pulled over. Okay. And um, we won't, we won't say what you did. No, 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 what, no, 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 don't go, no, no, don't go to it. What it made me, sh what it <laughs> showed me, is how advanced some of these police cars were. Because I remember, like, I was joining. 
onto this A road. Right. And there was a police car way further back behind me. And um, like it, it couldn't, it wouldn't be able to like, for example, read my plate or anything. Like it was, it was far enough like that. And um, for some reason, I have an eye for police cars and stuff. And it's not because I'm like, oh, where's the police yeah. car? But it's, I think it's because I studied criminology. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here we are. One of the causes was how to spot a police car. <laughs> no, here we are. I, I've always had an interest in police. Okay. And, um, and that's, I studied policing and criminology and stuff like that, right? So I do, like, when I see a police car, I do, like, look at it. I'm like, oh, like, um, I'm very intrigued by just the whole, like, criminal justice system and stuff like that. Right. And so I remember seeing that police car, but because uh, anytime I see police car, it does register in my head. I don't ever like ignore, right? And so then it, it, it eventually pulled me over. I was like, "What, what have I done here? Yeah. Like, I, what? I noticed yeah. you." Like, yeah. anyway, the guy put, comes out, roll down your window, and he goes, um, "He goes, you're that fresh ground again." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he said, "You're, um, I think, like something had expired, right?" Right. It's, it's something routine, like MOT well, or something. Yeah, something like had expired. He's like, yeah, did you know it had expired? I was like, no, I had no idea. And he's like, okay, fine. Um, you need to basically go straight to a garage and mm. sort that out. Um, and he said to me, he goes, normally, he goes, like, we have the authority to um, do X, Y, Z. I think maybe like give you a fine or what, or give you points. I think if it's MOT, I think they've got the authority to like take your car away so you can't drive anymore. Right. Yeah. But he said, I can see genuinely that like you had no idea. Like, I can see on your face. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this guy was like being sorry for me. Yeah. I was like, genuinely, yeah. like, I can see he's like, just go to garage kind of thing. So, um, my point in that story is, is that I, I'm that guy, like, I'm like, oh, I had no, like, I'm such a rule follower in that regard. Like, I'll just, I, I, if I knew, he could probably see on my face that like, if I knew, I would have sorted yeah, it ASAP. Yeah. But then I said to him, I said, how did you, like, yeah. know? I was, that's what I was most intrigued by. I was like, how yeah. did you know? Because you didn't see my plates or anything. He said, because he goes, there's some cars on this, uh, there's some cars, police cars that have this thing, not all police cars have it, but traffic police cars do, where, it can basically scan all of the cars in its vicinity and it will highlight the cars that have like a, uh, that for example, have like an expired whatever wow. MOT or right. insurance. I was like, no way. So that's why I learned that. But anytime I've had an interact interaction with a policeman, I'm like always like asked like loads of questions. Like how do you do that? Do that? Yeah. I've only, in the UK, I've only had one experience with a policeman, I think. Uh, and I also got pulled over. <clears throat> I did, um, it was 3 a.m. with my friends. I did a maneuver that I'm not proud of. Okay, fine. Right? And I got pulled over by an undercover police. Oh, really? Right? So it wasn't even like a police car. Yeah. It was a normal thing. And then he suddenly put his lights on. And I was like, Great. going to jail. Oh, I'm yeah. going to jail. Because it got like undercover, bro. I thought, I don't know what's going on here. I did something. It wasn't mad dodgy what I did. It was just like a bit like. Let's say on. you did a U-turn. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, thankfully, he just got out of the car and said, look, I've got bigger fish to fry type of thing tonight. But don't ever do that again. And he got yeah, back in the car. But for a while, like on the walk up to the car, my heart was like pumping because I was thinking. The thing in the UK that you've got to be careful of is, is that there's certain police um, officers who are on um, training. Right. And in order to pass, to become an official police officer, you have to, within a certain period of time, get an official arrest. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you could get yeah. someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what they would do, bro, those police officers in the UK is they will specifically like, Bro, if it's the most minor thing, but technically it's against law, like they need yeah, that arrest quota, yeah, so yeah. they can get to the uh, graduation. Yeah, yeah. And bro, sometimes- And unlock the beating <laughs> <of their> achievement. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's like they like 24 hours away, like they need yeah. the arrest. So um, if you bad. catch someone like that, that's, uh, that's yeah. rough. Yeah. I, know, I know one brother in, he's, he's, he's quite high up in the police now in the UK. Um, but he told me some stories, bro. Like when he was, what's it called, on the beat, or like, you know, just a general, the first couple of years, I've got to be like on the street type of thing. Bro, some of the stories he told me was crazy. Like the kind of stuff I didn't even think was happening in London, yeah. but it was just like common. It's like mad, bro. Yeah, imagine, man. And like he, for a while, it was like tough for him, man, because the stuff he yeah. was dealing with on a regular basis. Crazy. But yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, it's a tough job. It's a tough job. Yeah, it's a tough job. Yeah. I think that and being a doctor, very tough. Could you be a doctor? Um, no, I couldn't be a doctor. Uh, yeah, I'd find it too difficult, man. Yeah, I'd find it to being a doctor very, very difficult. I think I'd get over the like <clears throat> the squeamishy type stuff. I'd probably get over that. Oh, is it? I think there's some bad stuff though. Yeah, bro. The, bro, I wouldn't be able to prefer like the A and E type. Like, bro, like, if oh. you're a GP and someone comes in and says that they've like, yeah, they feel like they've got like, you know, 
athlete's foot. <laughs> no, like worse. Like I, I don't want to say what. Yeah, no, it's something mad. Yeah, but like yeah, you yeah. Want to do some inspections. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not even. I don't even think that that would be bad. But my, I'd have a bigger fear if it was like I'm on any duty and it's like oh, we've got a call. Oh, so, yeah, and it's like oh, it's been like a horrible like I don't know, man acid attack or or like a car crash is like this guy's coming like split in half is like oh my god I've got to deal with it so that as an avid follower of Freshly Grounded you'll know that we've had a um, like a, a face surgeon on Freshly Grounded before Dr. Oh, yeah. Riz Mahmood no, yeah, okay. and he worked in A&E and his specific um, job is slash was to basically fix it's called I can't remember what the name of it it's basically when someone's like Head is completely needs restructuring or something like that, oh, fixing. Wow. So it's like if someone's been in an accident where like they've um, got in a street fight and the guys had an axe, oh. and he has to like basically like fix that. Wow! And so he said he's seen some mad stuff. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I wouldn't be able to Like do he's like, had to fix craniums <coughs> or like he's seen like someone like who's had like a I don't know, like a sword in their head and he had oh, to like yeah. take it out and so so he we had him on Freshly Grounded. I I'll, I'll check that out. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. I'll check that out. But yeah, that kind of stuff would. I, 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 can, I can see how you could kind of get used to it, but you, you just know for a fact that every like week or two, you're going to be oh, served yeah. a, a curveball. Yeah. Like you, could, you couldn't even fathom that would be a possibility when yeah. someone's coming and just like... I think maybe it was called facial... Facial reconstruction? Maybe, I can't remember. Yeah, but it was, his one was specifically for when like someone comes in, so it's not like a, someone's booked an appointment yeah, and yeah. like oh, yeah. they so want to sort of kind of change their nose. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've got an axe in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's Monday, Monday at four. <laughs> <laughs> that day doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna say, yeah, doctors, doctor and police. Not doctor, yeah, that's hard. I mean, poli- in fact, police is probably worse because like the doctor gets the call that they're coming in. Like, you know, like the police have to be like first. The police are the ones making the call. Yeah. So again, like my friends like give me like horror stories where he's turned up to a place and like there's been an attack on someone and like it's mad. Yeah, or, it's not an easy job, like, yeah. Or, for example, he told me a story where it's like someone's, again, in the UK, unfortunately, <laughs> happens often, yeah. <laughs> not, it's not, this, is, this ain't funny. That someone died. Oh, that's not good at elderly all. Elderly person died. Yeah, that's the way I laugh. Yeah, it's not smart. Why, like, why are you laughing, bro? It's an elderly woman that died, right. but it's one of those, it's one, just, why are you looking at me? Why are you smiling <laughs> at this story? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to kill my smile. Right. Definitely, kill the smile. Yeah, definitely right. serious. Okay, let's, let's go for the story again, but no smiling. Right. Okay. An only woman died. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The only woman died, yeah. And she hadn't been discovered for like a week. This is really bad. It's okay. horrible, right? Yeah, I don't fine. know why I was smiling at all. And he had, and he was the one who went in. <laughs> he was the one who went in there and discovered her. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And because because like someone called about smell, so he had to go. And, and not only that, bro, uh, is this the friend I'm thinking about? No, I don't think so. I don't, you know, I, I don't know him. I don't even know. Okay, him. I know who you think I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about him because he told me some stories. Yeah, I'm sure they've all got stories, bro. <laughs> the story I was gonna tell you is so much less bad. Oh really? This is. Hot. I was gonna tell you a story about how one time he was like, <laughs> he went to a house and then there was like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. I think mean, that's like. <laughs> That set me off. <laughs> I was like, no way off you. Out of that house. Just because there was a dog in there. I think like the dog was like a bit like, you know, a bit yappy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> Bro, I'm dealing with a like, hardcore, like life changing scenario. It's all about this buddy poodle at the door. But yeah, this, this brother, he, bro, he walked in, he's, he's ha- had to, fa- he, and I think he was on his own, right? So he's called, he's called a partner to come, someone to come. But they said like, yeah, we can't get there until like four hours. And, so Le- he deal with himself. Legally, he had to stay there. He was oh, he- him with a dead body. Yeah, he oh. wasn't. He had to stay and sort of quote unquote guard the dead body until like the ambulance stuff could, could arrive and undertake undertaker. But he couldn't get it for like four hours, so he literally had to stay in this house with his dead person who'd been there for like a week. And I won't describe what he described, but it was bad, bro. It was bad. It's the type of thing where it's like you need like a few weeks to recover from it, like just like psychologically. You know what's really sad is. Um yeah, it, the, especially it, it's sad, like loneliness in elderly people got a big um, rise of awareness during COVID. Yeah. And it really made you realize like how sad <laughs> it is and um, and how real it is and that it exists. Yeah. And it's, it is tough, man. Because I, saw- I think like another thing is like a lot of elderly people have grown old with a spouse. And then one of the spouses at some point inevitably passed away, but the other one stays alive. And um, 
that must be really tough. Bro. Imagine like, you know, 60 years. And bro, bear in mind that in the previous generations, they got married young, like kind of like how we've been married young. Like they didn't get married in their thirties. They got married like, you know, a lot of them like 18, like yeah. she was my you know, high school sweetheart and then get married and they've been together for 60 years, 70 years, day in, day out. And they want to pass it. That's really sad when you think yeah. about it. That's heartbreaking stuff. <coughs> and we had a neighbor like that. They were called Charlie and Violet. And um, so what happened is, is um, Violet eventually, they were the loveliest, by the way, like just old couple, yeah. you know, next to neighbors. So Violet passes away. And uh, I think within a month, her husband died. And I think I've heard so many stories like that. My mom always says, yeah, like he died of heartbreak. But I don't know what, like, I don't know if it's actually correlation, but like there's a lot, you do hear stories of like elderly couples dying very soon, like yeah. after each other. I, mean, I, I guess just the, I mean, you could call it heartbreak. I think there is some sort of science, science behind it. It's not, I mean, it's like the stress, as you said, like 70 years, same person. Yeah, you can't, you, you, you yeah. grow dependent on that person. Just the, the stress of them not being there. The trauma on your the heart. Trauma, yeah, yeah, the trauma. Um, for an eight-year-old person, for example, it's a lot to deal with, man, when they're already probably dealing with other health issues. Yeah. You know, that, that sort of spike in stress. You know, you got your- All they want to do is park in the little- You know what I mean? Bay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After you know all that. Saying? So, yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, I mean, is it, I was watching one um, sort of video in the UK, like a, da- a brother giving Dow on the street, right? And he was talking to like an elderly, just elderly English man. And he was talking about like the virtue of, obviously looking after your, be good to your parents in Islam. <clears throat> and he gave the evidence for that. And he said to this man, like, wouldn't you love it if your children treated you like Islam teaches us to t- treat our parents? And like, he was just stunned because he was like, because again, he, his, his story was, from what I could see, a typical story of my, my kids grew up, I barely see them anymore, they don't look after me, I'm, I'm gonna bring up going to a care home type of thing. And when he heard about like these, how Islam teaches us to look after our parents, even in old age, like he was almost like shocked. He was like, wow, that would be amazing if like my kids would look after me like that. Have you ever seen an old person's Shahada video? It's incredible. I think so, I think so. Yeah, I saw one, I think maybe from Ayer or something. And it was like, wow, like this person has lived, it really puts into perspective that, that thing that people say is that you can live your whole life as a non-Muslim and then you take your Shahada and you don't mm. like, the, there's this, I saw this one video, really elderly man, really old. And he got the message of Islam and he took Shahada. And there's a video of it and I was like, it just took him back, man. I was like, wow. And the reverse obviously can be true. You can live your whole life yeah. Muslim and then may Allah protect us. You could end I up mean, falling out of Islam before you die. It's like, you can never be too prideful on the fact that you're Muslim or you know you feel like you're upon the haq or something like that. Yeah, man. May Allah keep us steadfast. I mean, I mean yeah. But I think it's a good time to call the episode. It's, we're 58 minutes in, which is almost we're two minutes That's away. Like from, but two minutes from an hour. Yeah, it is two minutes from an hour, which is our dedicated time. I think what we should do is we should end it because of the fact that the game is back on say online and right. uh, uh, purchasable. We should end it with some questions from the game. One yeah. question each. Fun. Yeah. So let me go grab the game. Love it. And then we'll get a question each. Now, conveniently, I had an open box. Oh wow! Reach. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, I think what we'll do is I'll split the deck in half and then just choose a question okay. that you actually want to ask because we haven't got time for the whole dilly dallying. Yeah. Um, Let's get to the good part. Yeah, I'm going to quickly... Oh, that's a really good question to ask you, actually, because I don't know the answer oh, to that's that. That's interesting. Um, that's, my, that's my backup. Yeah, okay. Uh, we should set a time limit, like yeah, 20 seconds. Yeah, I won't be too long, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a, ooh, wait. Mate, some of these questions I can't... I mean, yeah, some of these questions are very, very good. Oh, actually, I'm going to ask you that one. Yeah, right, fine. I'm I've got the question. I'm deciding between these yeah, two. Fine, same. Uh, I want to ask you this one. Okay, cool. You you go first. All right. No, no, I'll go first. Go on. No, no, you go first. Fine. Yeah, I think this one's better. <coughs> which which emotions do you tend to disguise? Oh, that's a very good question, actually. Brilliant. I. Uh, I think maybe like. Um, being proud. So, I, 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 uh, so, and I think I should express that more. But um, 
if someone has done something that I think is great, like someone like really close to me, I don't necessarily, I'm not the first person to go like, wow, I'm so proud of that you've done that, even though I will feel proud inside. But I think, I don't know if it's like embarrassment or like a, a fear of like being too vulnerable by being like that, but I do want to be more like that. Like express, it could be as little as like if Zachary has done something impressive uh, and even though I want to be like, oh, that's so amazing. I feel the responsibility that I'm his dad. So I'm like, let me make sure I control that because, um, you know, we've still got a long way to go. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> With like, <laughs> can't do backflips, is he? <laughs> exactly. But I don't want to be that dad. So I do want right. to like I do, but it's not just with being dad. It could be like I think it's with anybody who I feel responsible over. Right. Like I think like my little sister says to me that like she says to me that I have a relationship with her that's different to the relationships that I have with any of my other siblings. And she's like, why can't you just be a bit more relaxed with me? Mm. And I think the reason is because she's my little sister. I understand that I have a responsibility. Whereas with my older sister, I can be a kid around her. I can be like, oh, like it's it's time for me to be looked after. Right, right. Right. Go to my older sister's house, she'll make me food, she'll ask me questions, how's things. And I'm like, yeah, well, she's older than me, so I can be, be. but then, so, um, but I would like to be more, I, 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 I do like that I am like that, because I don't also just want to be completely like, not know my responsibilities. Yeah. But I would like to just sometimes be like, oh, that's, um, I'm excited for you or that's made me happy or I'm mm. proud. Interesting. I mean, I hear a lot of the time, I've heard of you, it's a common story actually of like- a, Pakistani a, men. No, 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 <laughs> not even that. It's really in general, right? Where the son is desperate for his dad's approval yeah. throughout life. It goes wrong, yeah. Yeah, it goes wrong. Where it's like, my dad never really tells me that he loves me or hugs me or he says he's proud of me. And to an extent, what you're saying is like, it is needed. There has to be a balance with it. Cause you, again, you have to be that person who's like, you push them a bit more and you know, you're, you're sort of that's that source of, of not sternness, but you know what I mean? Like you push them a bit more, you're not like over the top with like just praise all the time. So there's got to be that balance. But yeah, when I hear these stories of like people who are constantly chasing the approval and the love of, of a particular parent who is difficult to get it from, I feel like after a certain point, it starts to damage that person. Yeah, it does, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. heard this story many they times. They start getting resentment. Yeah, res even resentment. Sometimes they, they, it doesn't even uh, result in resentment. It res results in just like them trying even harder to, to get that emotion from them. And that parent, almost the harder they try, the less they're going to give it because they themselves have got into this habit of like, oh, I can't do that because it, it breaks my whole persona with this person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old man or woman. This happens with, with mums as well. I've always been this way with this one, with this with this child. Like I'm not even sure how to be different with this child. It feels awkward to be different with this child like that because I've sort of established this habit with them. But yeah, that kid is desperate for like that sort of thing. And it doesn't end up happening. Sometimes. Yeah, I, I actually had this situation yesterday. So uh, it was not about being proud. It was actually the opposite. But I did feel like I had to loosen up with that. Yeah. Um, sternness. <clears throat> what happened is recently I've been taking Zachary to the mosque a lot more because he's been behaving in the mosque. Okay. And so initially when I started taking him, I took him like once, twice and he didn't behave and so I didn't let him come because I don't want to disturb the Jamaat. But recently he's been really good. Stand with me, he'll pray and we'll leave and he's, he's fine, he's great. He oh enjoys it, he loves it. Like, mm. Zachary, you want to go to mosque? Yeah. Yesterday uh, he didn't behave. Yeah. And so I told him off. When we, as soon as, like, as soon as, like, we did Taslim, I took him out of the mosque. I told him off, like, uh, explained to him why what he was doing was wrong and that he was being too loud. And I told him that in the mosque he has to be quiet, stuff like that. And he not he noticed that obviously I was upset with him. And so then, obviously, when we were crossing the road, I was like, just I had that like yeah. vibe about me. Yeah, yeah. Halfway on the journey back home, we walked. Halfway on the walk, I was thinking to myself like he knows I'm upset with him. He knows he's done something wrong. He's upset because I'm upset. He's looking at me, he's going, daddy mad. Like, and I'm like, <laughs> daddy <laughs> mad. Yeah. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, he's, there has to be a point where it's like yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. So then I switched it up because yeah. I actually was like, he's, he's only little, yeah, like yeah, yeah. he gets it. The point of it is just that he knows that it was wrong so he doesn't do it again. 
and now by the way I've got him on a mosque ban yeah. <laughs> he's not coming <laughs> yeah. he has to because yeah, he's, yeah. he's probably it's embarrassing it's a, yeah, he does yeah, this yeah, other yeah. Jamal so <coughs> I now I know okay you're not quite ready like he was good and he yeah. could just been a bad day but I can't Cut. you can just up an entire Jamal and it's fine like I'm going to give him a couple of months yeah. and then, uh, sorry Half of that walk, I noticed. I, I, so I decided to let my guard down, and he it changed. He's like so happy. Yeah. I said to him, I said, Zachariah, he's like, yeah. I was like, do you want to have a race back home? He goes, yeah. And I was like, all right, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. And we had a race. And bro, it just made a whole world of a difference. And I was yeah. like, I need to let myself loose like that more because yeah. he, the smile on his face that you could tell he was like, he's noticed that I'm not un- upset anymore. And we had a really fun race, and he loves running. And it was like, it was just all around a good experience. So yeah, that was that was a positive end to that one. That's, that's the kind of thing I'm trying to do more of as well, man, where it's like, something bad has happened. I am angry, but let me get my point across in a minute, or, like a minute, minute and a half. And then it's like, let's switch it up. And like, she's learned her lesson with my daughter. Yeah. Let me now put a positive spin on this because she's learned her lesson. She understands it. The the risk in my head is like, well, she won't take me seriously then, will she? If I yeah. Try, or it's only a minute and it's like back to like being goofy. But I do think like with, like we're talking about three-year-old children. Yeah, exactly. Here. Like you, got, you yeah. don't want to be too harsh. Yeah, control. you don't. So you got to find a balance. Maybe it might take you a year or two to find out what that balance it's is. It's fine. Yeah, I, th- I think like even like, I remember what Shekhtim was saying, like discipline is kind of like starts a bit later yeah, anyway. Exactly. Like seven, six, you start disciplining a child. Yeah. Like at this age, you just got to show them love. Yeah. So yeah, you tell them that what they've done is wrong and then you just go back to showing them the love. Yeah. And, how, and how regretful do, do I feel when like a situation happened, I just and then like, at the end of the day they're asleep. Yeah, and I just thought I didn't, I didn't, I, yeah. I didn't love them I, enough today. Yeah, man. I've got a bit. I lost myself too much, and I didn't show them enough love. And now I want to wake them up and give them a kiss. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, and it's bro, how forgiving our kids. Yeah, man, they're so forgiving. Yeah, like if I've like told Zachary off because he's done something naughty. At the end of that day, he still gives me a kiss. Good night. He's like, yeah. bye bye. Good night. He's like, Samuel Lake. I'm like. Yeah. Oh, like he's so forgiving. Yeah, like man. if someone's upset with me, I feel in my heart a bit like, mm. why did that person tell me off? You know what I mean? I don't know for sure. I, I, I've, I've felt it, man. Have you Have you ever apologized to him? Yeah, I've apologized to him. Like, I don't know if I've apologized to him, but like he's maybe said like, oh, daddy's mad. And I've gone, I'm not mad. Um, yeah. I'm happy. Look, and I'm, giving, I'm like, come here, give me a hug and stuff like that. So maybe not in work. I don't. I might have apologized. I don't find. So I'm not a person who finds apologizing difficult. I should say that. So it's not a challenge for me. So I guess like if I was like, if it was a, th- I'm, I might have apologized to him, but it's not a big enough thing for me to have noticed that I did it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I feel. I feel like that's important. <clears throat> yeah. To like to show them that you don't. You're not above apologizing. I'm not above apologizing. Yeah. It teaches them that they you should apologize when you're wrong, and it's like. Yeah, I don't know. Just, I think it's just important. Like, just important is the fact that I have I, sometimes I've thrown off the handle a bit too much on a certain thing, and I genuinely am sorry. Like, I've, I'm sorry that I said that, or I've not said that. I'm sorry that like, I shouted so loud or something like that. And so it's like it's important that they know that I'm sorry for that. And I suppose they learn to then say how to say sorry. And stuff yeah, they well, learn yeah. it, and I feel like it's a secondary thing. I feel like it's just important that again, I don't end the day regretting that. Like, oh, I shouted a bit too loud when she like did that, and it's like I'd rather she was just like she understands that even I know that I didn't have to shout at that point. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Fix okay. up, Faisal. Yeah, my, qu- my, <laughs> question, my question for you, you're going to hate this because I know what you like. And the, 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 the way we've managed to get you this far on the podcast is great. Uh, so the question is, when was the last time you cried? I know you don't like sharing your emotions. <sighs> but you have to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> It's actually um, to do with my daughter as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, she... She just wasn't sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> she was, mate, bro, it took two hours. Yeah. Um, she was, I think it was last week. Um, we, were, we called my family because she wanted to call them. She's going through this phase where she wants to call family in London, talk okay. to them, stuff like that. And she was having a conversation. Like, bro, it was like... Uh, she was, they were on the phone, like a Zoom call type thing. And she was on the, just like on the other end holding the phone talking. And they were asking the question and she was responding, like conversation. I wasn't even like part of it. I was like sitting next to her. And yeah, maybe like a little tear. May, it may have, pff, might have done. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, Your eyes pff. started sweating. Uh, yeah. You know. Thinking, oh, because, you, hey, because you're proud. Hey, I, uh, I do suffer from hay fever. Yeah, fine. So, Wait, we'll, is that we'll, we'll leave it at that. Because you're proud? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. But yeah, also hay fever. I don't know if I've ever cried from pr- being proud of my children. It was just like a surreal moment, I guess, because it was like literally, I'm not yeah. even, I, I'm not even part of the conversation. They're just having a back and forth, and just like, oh, that wow, that's nice. that's yeah. my, yeah, I'm back. So yeah, 
Oh. But before yeah, that, yeah. couldn't couldn't tell you, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when I was born, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even then, I think like yeah. confirmed it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was a nice episode, bro. It was a nice episode. So, uh, yeah, if you're um, uh, if you made it to the end, uh, you can buy the game now at shop.freshuguan.com, and uh, I'll make the announcement video now as well. Thank you so much, Kaya. I know it's late, and um, but uh, it was lovely to do this as always. As always, take care. You too. Salam alaikum.